All right, guys, this is Norval Central coming back at you with another YouTube video. And I just want to touch on two topics that a lot of people are asking about or just talking about in general. The first one is Jarvis Brownlee with his whole uh, saga that's going on right now. And then also Winston Wright Jr. with this car accident. Uh, that's very big for Florida State on both sides. And it's very, very publicized right now. So I just want to kind of get into it, break down a little bit of what's happened and uh, kind of give my thoughts on the situations. Uh, don't get too in-depth, but try to do the best I can with those situations. Um, but the first one we'll go ahead and talk about is Jarvis Brownlee. And this is an interesting situation because it really started on Instagram. You know, Brownlee had some interesting Instagram stories where he was talking about he had no NIL deals at Florida State. And as we all know, the state of Florida with their NIL uh, purposes going forward is not really doing the greatest in the world right now. You know, you want to see more there. Um, I believe Florida State just started their new NIL platform with Dreamfield. Um, it's Warpath 850, I believe. And you can be able to purchase some of those uh, membership rewards to be able to give back to those players. Uh, so that way they can have some kind of uh, NIL deal going there for that situation. But uh, Ingrid Smith uh, from Nolcast, he actually tweeted out – something that really got a lot of fans talking and also some of the players kind of reacted on the situation as well. He did tweet about the situation and he said the Jarvis Brownlee situation is an interesting one and I'm sure there's two sides to every story. As I understand it, the frustration is not about the lack of an NIL deal. In my opinion, there was one present. From what I heard, Brownlee did not meet the minimum requirements of the agreement and such compensation has either been delayed or will not be occurring, which is kind of the way the life slash the real world works. I hope this gets sorted out. I wish nothing but the best for Jarvis, but NIL is going to expose these kids to some real life lessons. And I think this might be what we're seeing play out right now. And Jarvis Brownlee actually responded to that situation saying, I'm from Miami. Football is all I know. Um, then his teammate, Jerry and Jones, even tapped in as well and retweeted Ingram Smith's tweet and said, incorrect per usual. And I'm not here to stir the pot. I'm not here to play both sides or anything like that. Um, there was actually a situation a little bit later because Florida State is on spring break right now, so they are away from the team. Brownlee has not been practicing with the team so far, and there's kind of a lot of issues going on with that. And you want to kind of respect his privacy, but, you know, he is back home. And, you know, he even tweeted out that he was back home where he's loved, which is Miami. He's originally from Miami down there. Um, then he also reposted a Florida Gators practice video commenting on how their energy level was super high, and that got taken down a little bit. There, there's just a lot of things going on. A lot of frustrations are building up. A lot of the fans are not really helping in certain social media platforms, and I understand the climate of NIL. I understand that maybe some things aren't really working out. There's a lot of scholarship quarterbacks on the roster. They actually have 10 on the roster so far. That one is uh, – Richard Jr., Jerry and Jones, Richard Jr., Renardo Green, and then also you got uh, Jarvis Brownlee Jr. as a Richard sophomore. You also have Richard sophomore Demory Tate, Richard sophomore Travis J., Richard sophomore Grady Vance, sophomore Kevin Knowles, sophomore Marion Cooper, uh, Richard freshman um, Hunter Washington, and then you also got freshman Zaria Thomas. And there's a lot of situations going on there because you have a lot of guys that are stepping up. Even Renato Green as a redshirt um, junior that switched over from safety to hopefully going to play cornerback. We'll see how that plays out. But he's playing very well. He's playing very instinctual to the ball. You're even seeing Demory Tate having some moments. He's finally getting his academics back in order, and you're really seeing a lot of progress from him. Travis Jay's shown up in a couple of those mission takeaways. Uh, Greedy Vance has even talked about the opportunity there. He could be a big factor in nickel corner. Kevin Knowles has played well just like he was last year. Uh, Marion Cooper has taken that next step forward. And Azaria Thomas, the, the do-it-all freshman, is really, really turning some heads in practice. And this is kind of getting to a situation where if you're not in practice and you're not able to really firm your, your rotation piece in, in that uh, situation there – it becomes hard to be able to play significant time. I'm a little bit nervous with, with the uh, playing time and everything that's going on there. I did, however, project Brownlee to be the starting cornerback alongside Kevin Knowles and Marion Cooper because I think those are the three um, equal parts there. I think they played well together later in the, the back half of the season, 
and you even talk about during the 2021 season, um, you know, Brownlee Jr. had 51 total tackles. He was sixth on the team. He had two tackles for loss, three passes defended, one forced fumble, two interceptions, and one defensive touchdown. And he really came on in those final three games against Miami, Boston College, and also Florida, where he had 22 total tackles, a forced fumble, a tackle for loss, and an interception. So there's a lot of things going right for Jarvis Brownlee. You know, he's a very good stopper at run support, but you also saw his flaws in that Jacksonville State game where he wasn't able to defend uh, deep, you know, in coverage. And you even saw it sometimes at Louisville when they were behind in the first half. There was just a lot of instances where it wasn't really clicking. And that goes for all the secondary at that point. They were really trying to find that rotation. And Jarvis Brownlee, you know, Kevin Knowles and Marion Cooper, those guys really started to find their stride. And you even saw Jerry and Jones step up in the, against that uh, North Carolina game. So there's a lot of good pieces. Um, there's a lot of talented pieces in the defensive backfield, especially at cornerback. And you want to see more from Jarvis Brownlee. You're wanting to really see if he can come back and, and kind of limit distractions. All I got to say is, is I hope that he kind of finds his way through all this craziness that's going on right now and hopefully finds his way to go through there. Um, I know Mike Norvell doesn't really do the whole Jimbo Fisher shutting down social media kind of aspects because he wants to make sure that you're able to really represent yourself in a certain way and actually utilize your platform in certain ways. And I know this really isn't the greatest way to represent your social media accounts. I can't even say for him, but you have to understand he still is a kid. You know, he's still in college. He's still trying to find his way out. And there's a lot of things that get over-publicized, especially when you're a student athlete at a university like Florida State. But I will say that um, I hope he does find his way through this. I hope he does get a situation where he's able to really get through, whether it's NIL playing time, what, whatever the case is uh, going on right now with him not practicing and doing some other things. I'm really hoping that he finds his way back because, like I said, he's a Florida State Seminole, and I want him to be successful. So that's really the the bottom line for that. I just want Jarvis Brownlee to be back on the team and be able to be an effective piece. But if he transfers elsewhere and goes elsewhere, I wish him nothing but the best. Um, just on a somber note a little bit and a more serious note, uh, Winston Wright Jr. was actually involved in an automobile accident over the weekend in his hometown of Savannah, Georgia. And multiple reports, they suggest that he has a leg injury. However, he is in stable condition, so that's very, very good news. I was very pleased to hear about that being in stable condition. Really hate the fact that he, uh, you know, got in that automobile accident. They, you know, had to, had to go over to the hospital and everything and get everything situated. So hopefully everyone that was involved in both cars were able to uh, be okay at the end of the day. I'm hoping the best for everybody. Um, like I said, this is a huge loss to the wide receiver core. We don't know how long he's going to be out or the significance of the injury. Uh, Wright did have 63 uh, receptions for 688 yards and five touchdowns during the 2021 season. He was also a very great kickoff return specialist where he had 25 kickoff returns for 618 yards and one touchdown. His average was about 24 yards. So it was very impressive to see those numbers from him. And I really thought out of the four wide receivers that we brought in, I really thought he was the best that we could have gotten. I was already penciling him in as a number one wide receiver. Hopefully, you know, it could be a fracture, you know, a hairline fracture or something like that. We're hoping for the best and we're hoping it's nothing, you know, hopefully it's just a scare and nothing else goes on with that. But like I said, devastating loss, you know, a lot of things happened during spring break and, Unfortunately, Florida State was on the on the back half and bitter end of that, and I'm hoping that everything kind of pans out for him and his family. Um, but just kind of looking at the wide receiver room real quick, uh, we have redshirt senior um, Ontario Wilson, redshirt senior Keyshawn Hilton, redshirt junior Micah Pittman, redshirt junior um, Jordan Jordan Young, and then also redshirt sophomore Kenyon, uh, Kentron Portier. And also redshirt sophomore Deuce Span, redshirt sophomore Johnny Wilson, redshirt sophomore um, Darion Williamson, also sophomore Malik um, McLean, and then also redshirt freshman Joshua Burrell. There's a lot of sophomores in there. I'm sorry. Tongue twister. But I will say that there is a lot of good pieces in this room. They are doing a better job this season in creating that separation. Now, it's only practice. So you want to see what they do in game reps. 
Um, Ontario Wilson's kind of showing some flashes here and there. Keyshawn Helton is kind of showing that veteran leadership. Micah Pittman has played really, really well uh, compared to a lot of things. Kentron Portier has flashed a little bit, as, as we've seen. Deuce Man, I think, is more of a developmental project right now at 6'4", 195. But I do think he has NFL potential later on down the road. Johnny Wilson at 6'7", 230 has been impressive, catching every contested catch. And that's what Florida State's really missed for the past five or six years. So we'll definitely see on that one. And then Darion Williamson, another one, he actually tore his ACL in high school. He's kind of getting back into the swing of things. And then uh, Malik McLean doing a really good job there. And Joshua Bro looks like an absolute freak. You're hoping that he gets back from the injury pretty quickly and um, gets, gets to kind of go into work this season. But overall, I really do like this wide receiver rotation. Really stinks that um, we won't see, you know, Redshirt Jr., Winston Wright Jr., Right now, we'll definitely see how that kind of plays out. He was even expecting in his farewell to West Virginia and going to Florida State, he was talking about how this could be his last year, and he was talking about the league. Now, hopefully, you know, we have about five and a half months before the season starts, so we'll definitely see how that plays out. And I really want to see the development of that. I want to see how the news kind of develops with his injury. But nonetheless, I want to see guys like Micah Pittman really take that step forward because he come from Oregon. He was wanting more opportunities in an offense that he could really shine in. You're talking about Johnny Wilson, that 6'7", 230 receiver that can high point the football at a high level. You want to see more out of Malik McLean. You want to see those two redshirt seniors go out the right way in uh, Ontario Wilson and also Keyshawn Helton. And you're hopefully wanting to see – someone else step up and really be that guy at the number one wide receiver spot that I thought Wright Jr. could be. Now, he could be fine for game one against Duquesne, but we'll definitely see how that pans out. And I'm hoping for the best, but that was definitely a blow for Florida State. I thought these wide receivers really had to prove it. And I thought that Wilson, uh, Micah Pittman, and also Deuce Fan, they had some potential, but none was really that certified one wide receiver like Winston Wright Jr. was. That was the biggest key with losing him so far and having this news come out now is you're really trying to find who is going to be your certified number one. Maybe Winston Wright Jr. will come back during the summer and everything will be just fine. But, you know, it's it's too early to tell. You know, you want to give him that time and that respect and privacy right there for his family to kind of go through some, some things that they have to go through and hopefully everything can kind of pan out correctly. Um, but just overall, I'm hoping that, you know, we see a Micah Pittman on the outside. I hope we see a Johnny Wilson on the outside. And, and maybe, just maybe, you know, we can, we can get a Malik McLean, I think, would be the best option. Um, I really do like a lot of these rotational pieces. And I think that now, with the uh, addition of Winston Wright Jr., I thought that it could be a situation where Ontario Wilson and Keyshawn Hilton can be your wide receiver five or six. But with that injury, maybe you might slide him up to four and five. I don't, I don't really know what you're going to get out of Kentron Portier and also Darian Williamson. They've shown flashes, but what are you going to get? Joshua Bro, the same thing. Are you going to get a person that's really healthy? You know, it's about 6'2", 6'3", um, about 230, 225. He is a very effective red zone target, and I think he could be a viable piece but you have to wonder what that's going to be. Do span the same thing. You know, he is very, very quick on his feet, but he is converting from quarterback to wide receiver last season with Illinois and is still getting used to the position. So overall, I just hope that, you know, both of these situations with Jarvis Brownlee and also Winston Wright, I hope they get resolved. I hope both of them, you know, work out productively at Florida State this season. I hope to see both of them on the field in Doak Campbell Stadium. 